they're spending on research and development over these years. Um, their total, total operating expenses increased um, in 2010. Sales and general um, administrative expenses also increased. Um, and they didn't, they, their um, restructuring merger and acquisition costs were a lot less than um, compared with Pfizer. percent changes um, here show that um, there was an increase in restructuring merger and acquisition costs and that was due to um, that was due to to their merger with um, Shering Cloud Corporation. Um, in 2008, and um, those um, costs have increased, but they'll be um, decreasing. The other costs have um, slightly have slightly increased. The balance sheet for Merck um, shows that cash um, was 84.3 percent higher than the 2006 amount. Um, Accounts receivable were almost double um, the 2006 amount um, due to the increase in sales and revenue. And also, um, the accounts receivable, they're increasing quite a lot faster than sales, and they might have a problem with collecting on that. Um, inventories um, increased, um, they're 3.3 3 .3 times the 2006 amount. Um, and it could be due to the increase in production from the acquisitions and um, our current assets um, have been increasing. They're 90.8 percent higher than 2006. Investments have decreased for um, 2010. Goodwill um, in 2009 and 2010 um, increased um, due to the acquisitions. Um, also, their intangible assets have increased. Uh, Non-current assets and um, total assets have also increased um, in 2010 compared with um, the 2006 amounts. Liabilities and stockholders' equity. Um, the loans payable and current portion of long-term debt was 86.8 times higher than 2006 amount. Um, the accounts payable was um, 4.6 times the 2006 amount, um, which could be due to the increase in purchases um, from Merck suppliers as a result of the increase in sales. Um, current liabilities were 22.9% higher than 2006. Um, Long-term debt, um, it increased um, 2.7 times the 2006 amount. Um, also, not non-current liabilities was 2.8 times that amount. Um, total liabilities were double the 2006 amount. Um, common stock um, increased 60 times um, due to the merger um, with Shinging Cloud Corporation. Um, other paid-in capital also increased. Um, treasury stocks decreased um, in 2010. Mark um, stockholders' equity and total equity and total liabilities were all um, two and a half times to three times um, larger than they were in 2006. All right, we're at the home stretch. Uh, I did the, the vertical analysis. Uh, we'll start off with Mark and for uh, for time. Constraints. I just uh, I'm just going to present on 2009 and 2010. Um, so for the income statement, uh, what we did was uh, we had percentages uh, of each of those items as, as compared to sales. So when you look at um, the sales for 2009 and 2010, um, 2009 was 27.428. And 2010 was 45987. Then, as a percentage,
percentage of that, some of the things that I wanted to point out um, in here was material and, produ uh, material and production. Um, you're looking at 40% um, um, of uh, total um, net income. And then also you're looking at in 2009 it was 32%. Uh, so you see a slight increase uh, in um, the cost of uh, production of materials. Uh, and then when you go down to the operating income, you also notice that uh, there was a, a drop in 2010, um, where, where it's 5.15, uh, and in 2009 it was 8.7. Um, other things uh, that you should uh, probably worth noting is that uh, the equity income from affiliates, it was 1.2% in 2010, and it was 814 in 2009. So it's a, it's a drop in that. Um, then when you look at uh, net income, you see it's 2% it it of 2% uh, in 2010, and then 47%. Pfizer, um, again, just a few years, 2010 and 2009, um, the, the cost of sales was 24% um, of revenue in 2010, and then 17% in 2009, so um, it basically cost them a, a, little, a little bit more in 2010. Um, uh, a lot of times in, in pharmaceutical companies, you see that. Um, I know I've seen in the past that the cost of sale goes up because of uh, production loss, specifically in compounding, uh, where if you're uh, something that's really expensive when you're compounding chemicals and you lose a batch, you're losing a lot um, of, of, uh, of money there. So it could be attributed to that. Uh, and then overall gross profit, um, so uh, you know, because the cost of sales was lost, you have 75%. Um, here and it's uh, 82 percent. Then you also look at tax. I think something that was interesting was uh, tax on income was uh, 13 percent in 2010, and it was 29 percent um, in 2009. And I just want to go back and show. Tax on income for Merck was, was interesting uh, compared to, to uh, Pfizer, where they actually paid 1.45% uh, um, on income, and in 2009 it was 8.2%. So they're definitely paying a lot less than, uh, than Pfizer. So that was, uh, that was pretty interesting. Um, so, you know, some of the notes uh, for, for balance sheets. Um, when you're doing this, you're just for the asset side. You're you're showing a percentage of a, of total assets. So for cash, there was an increase in 2010 uh, from 2009, where it was 10.3 percent for Merck in 2010 and 8.3 uh, percent. So it could be um, they collected more uh, receivables uh, that year. Uh, and the other things uh, when we actually look at receivables, you see that is the case. Maybe that explains why there's more cash. Uh, where in in um, 2010 it was 6.9, and uh, 2009 it was 5.8. So investments um, it increased in 2010 to 2.05 percent from 0.38 percent in 2009. Um, when you look at both current and non-current assets, uh, current assets increased in 2010 to 27 percent of total assets from 25.3 in 2009. Um, this is due to the higher AR cash and short-term investments. Um, the balance sheets for Merck for the liabilities and stockholders, uh, the accounts payable, uh, there was a slight change in AP uh, to 2.18% in 2010 and 1.9% in 2009. Income tax payable, um, talked about earlier from the income, um, you also see uh, income tax payable, it's 
7% in 2010 and 1.14 in 2009. Long-term debt, there was an increase uh, um, of 14.6% from 2010 and 143 from 2009. It wasn't too much, but uh, it was a de definitely a little bit more increase for maybe a more small land property. Total liabilities, overall total liabilities percentage, um, it rose from 45% um, in 2009 to 46.2 in 10. Um, and then um, the Merck shareholder equity dropped from 52% in 2009 to 51% in 51.4% uh, in 2010. The total equity dropped from 54% uh, 54.8% in 2009 to 7 in 2010. Uh, so now we're going to the balance sheets for Pfizer. Again, the assets are shown as a, a percentage of the total asset. So for cash, really not any significant cash changes were noted. The cash for fuel, you had a 7.5 in 2010 and 6.9 in, in 2009. Uh, looking at these numbers, uh, you know, I thought there would be a little bit more significant change but that wasn't the case. Um, so we're left, left to assume that there were some difficulties in 2010 receiving uh, payments since AR was higher to the 10, but not cash did not increase. Long-term investments on loans decreased in 2010 um, to 4.9 to uh, 6.16 in 2008. Uh, so maybe they're not really investing too much in, in plan or uh, current and not current assets increased in 2010 to 31 percent uh, of total assets, and 28.9 in 2009 due to the higher AR and uh, short-term investments. Um, so balance sheet for uh, liabilities and stockholder equity. Uh, so this is shown as a percentage of the total uh, in liability and stockholder equity. Accounts payable. There was a, a slight change in AP. Uh, you see the percentage here, 2.6 in 2010 and 2.05 uh, in 2009. Income tax payable, there was slight, uh, uh, there was a significant drop actually. Um, it was uh, uh, 0.485 in 2010 and then um, 4.74 in 2009. Long-term debt, debt. Uh, so uh, that was 19.69 in 2010 and then 20.28 uh, in 2009. Total liabilities, um, overall total, total liabilities as a percentage of total liabilities and shareholder equity fell from 57.5% in 2009 to 54.7% in 2010. Um, so when you look at the overall uh, Pfizer shareholder equity, uh, it grew to, uh, from 42% in 2009 to 45% in 2010. And then total uh, shareholder equity grew from 42.4 to 45.2 in 2010. So our recommendation is for Pfizer. Um, their um, financial um, ratios in comparison with Merck were uh, much better and higher, um, specifically quick, um, current quick and cash. Um, they would have um, an easier time being able to repay short-term creditors and other liabilities um, with cash than Merck. Both um, Pfizer and Merck show profitability in the last five years, and their profit margins and return on assets and equity vary um, based upon the variable costs and expenses, such as research and de development. Um, Pfizer's return on sales have been more stable over the past five years. Um, Merck has improved their long-term solvency in the last couple of years when looking at um, debt to capital and equity. Um, and um, the dividend yield for Pfizer has been higher, um, higher than Merck for the last four out of five years, um, which resulted in higher cash flow for every dollar um, invested. And also Pfizer has um, free cash flow um, and noted that Pfizer is relatively um, undervalued compared to Merck, so our recommendation is for Pfizer. Any questions? Questions? Comments? Anything?